This is not a simple video about how to replace a magneto on an old 1950s chainsaw. Instead, this is a video documenting my experimentation with upgrading this magneto to take a newer part that's still made. So, the problem is, this really has this coil on there, which is a little bit bigger than the modern coils, and this one is totally dead. Whenever you measure the resistance between these, it is basically open circuit. And so, they still make this coil, which is a very similar part, but the inner hole for the core is a little bit smaller. So, I filed down the core and put this on here, and I'm having some problems getting it working. And so, yeah, it's a lot of experimentation, and I would like your guys' help with figuring out how to get this to work, because we can't just rely on the old coils for very long, because this is like 50 years old, and they don't make it anymore, and the other ones that you find that are old stock are just not going to work. So we need to find a way to upgrade to the newer coils that are still made. And, well, you can think about this as if it's a power transformer. So basically, this is a step-up transformer, just there is no primary winding. The primary winding is replaced by the magnet inside of the flywheel because the primary coil that creates the magnetic flux and the secondary absorbs the magnetic flux or whatever and creates higher voltage. Instead so with this you're generating that with the, the flywheel. Well, I think one problem I had was whenever I filed this down I now shorted all the the the, the plates together. You see, transformers are made out of little plates of metal because if you have just a solid core, there's, uh, I believe it's called eddy currents, that make it a lot less efficient. I believe by filing this down, I connected them all together, and so this is making this core far less efficient, and that's why I can't get quite a spark out of it. But there could be other issues, so I would really love if you guys could watch this video and then give your opinion on what I'm doing wrong and what is not working. I've tried new capacitors also and just somehow it's just not working. I'm going to source a digital oscilloscope that can handle 20,000 volts and I'm going to test this until we can have a better view of this in a future video. But for now, here's the video. So let's go back to when I first started with this and go from there. So, on my old chainsaw, we have a magneto that's not creating much of a spark. Actually, I, I'm not able to see any spark. So, I'm kind of curious if the capacitor, called a condenser in the engine realm, I guess, because well, it was kind of interesting. Stuff like this, the documentation in the, the nomenclature seems to have kept with the very old naming schemes. For instance, capacitors back in like the 1920s and 1930s used to be called condensers and now for electronics we've switched to calling them capacitors but we've kept calling these condensers oddly enough. Also I keep hearing high tension. High tension means high voltage so that's another term that's survived in, in this field of uh, expertise. So it's kind of interesting. I also have a uh, capacitor tester so Let's see if we can get this magneto off. If I can get this capacitor taken out, then I can actually test it and we can see maybe all it's needing is a new capacitor or condenser, whatever you want to call it. I am really worried about this. So I'm going to mark right here where this line of this part goes and hopefully that that'll stay after I clean the aluminum. So in case there's nothing to center it back on the original position, then I can always go off that. I imagine having all of this oily sawdust really inhibits cooling quite a bit. So, so in doing that, we'll move this. 
That's unfortunate. So it appears that one side of this, one connector is the actual case, and then the other one is this. Only 28 microfarads, so that's a bit low. I actually see on there somewhere. From what I understand, most engines require like 47 microfarad capacitors. So maybe we should go ahead and just try to replace this with a, a new one and just see what happens. measure these and the the resistance of this capacitor is like the mega ohms okay so there's much really low resistance across there I'm not sure what a good magneto resistance would be but you know whatever and this this cable might be bad because I can't get any connection So here's the ignition coil from a Briggs & Stratton Magneto. Actually, it was a Tecumseh one, or however you pronounce it. I just wanted to open that up just to see if it really is circular, or if it was more like a toroid, or um, almost like a tokamak, or whatever shape, you know? So, if I have to make one, then I know I can use it with just spooling it around like a 3D printed spool. But, I think I may have just found the right part. So the original coil's opening is like, I'd say 12 millimeters or, yeah, 12, millim 12 millimeters by 12 millimeters. And then it is about 28 millimeters tall. So I'm going to ask the seller for the dimensions of that to see if it fits this uh, Repco F2120. And if so, we can order that. So let's see how that goes. Here's the details for the coil that I bought. It's made for a Tecumseh engine, and I assume this is made for like 3 to 10 horsepower that has more spark. I could be wrong. It could just be a spark plug takes the same amount of spark no matter how big it is. But I find it interesting that the company is actually situated like uh, 10 miles from my home. Although it was made in Taiwan, so that's a bit of a shame. But oh well. But that's the information in case you guys want to follow along at home. So I am modifying this to be thinner because I got a magneto coil in. It's a newer one. I can't find one that fits this, but it's just too small. So I'm going to take one of these off. Like so. Maybe take one off the other side too. Yeah, I need to take another one off. And then I'll file this down. Thankfully this is some pretty soft metal. I'll file that down. And this should fit on there pretty well. And then we should back, be back in business. I'm just scoring it a little bit so that it's easier to break. Perfect. Yep, it fits on there. Now we just need to skim off a little bit on this side and this side. Oh wow, 
That's not that bad. It's only maybe like 15 or 20 minutes of filing too. Actually probably more like 12. It almost fits in there. You know, I was actually kind of expecting this to take longer and have to take out the power tools, but I might just better do it with this file. Now I'm going to get the wood. So, with that out of the way, I think it's a good time to put this back together and see if we got any spark. Looks like it's a bit of a rainy day today, but that's not going to be too much of a problem. So the points seem to be a bit, um, well, not really pitted like I've seen, but more like it's kind of dirty. Those are pretty nice and clean now, so it's good. looks about right. So with the new coil it definitely is creating electricity just not enough to create a spark just yet because like whenever I touch the output I can definitely get zapped by it so that's good before it never had that. Ah oh, I figured out the uh, starting issues. So these had washers around here between this piece and this piece, and I had lost three of them, well not lost, they're in there, but one of them was still on, so this entire thing was skewed a bit for the, for this past couple videos. So now this actually retracts well. And we can see that it gets up to like 50 volts or so. Now if I had an oscilloscope, I could definitely see how many hundreds of volts get out of this, but whenever I even move it like that fast, it's like painful if you touch it, so it's obviously kind of working, it's just not quite working. So the last thing I can think of is that maybe this wire is needed because perhaps this doesn't have a good connection to the main body of it, I don't know. I would think it would, but then again, I guess, I wonder why that would even be there. Actually, I guess we can test it. Huh. Okay, so I guess it does rely on that. Because in order to turn it off, you break that connection of that wire, so that makes sense. I thought it was opposite. I thought that it was grounding it, not that it was, yeah, whatever. I'm an idiot. We all know that. There's still one spot left, but oh well. Before it was completely caked with a uh, thick layer of oxide or something on there, so that's better. I'll press this back down and then we can try again. Yeah, I'm still not getting any spark. You know, what if that capacitor I put on there was too big? That might be, that might be a problem. So it's been about a week and I'm still having issues with this. I've tried every configuration I can think of. I've tried without the capacitor, I've tried with the old capacitor, I've tried with the new capacitor, I've tried with both capacitors, still nothing. I realized that I forgot to hook up this wire and so I hooked it back up. It still doesn't have much of an effect and whenever I measure the resistance I don't see much of a reason for that wire. So uh, there still is a bit of mystery to how this works because 
Well, I think what I need to do is I need to get a high voltage tester because this is this is testing at what a couple of volts, but I need to test this at like a couple thousand volts then to understand how this works. And I don't have a high voltage tester. I also bought myself a nice little spark gap thingy, so I can or um, gap setter tool. So I made sure that these gaps are the right size and I also gap the spark plug. Also tried a new spark plug, still nothing. I'm I'm just not sure what the problem is. Although there is one option. So the 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 core is basically the core to a transformer which is made of plates. And those plates need to be insulated against each other so that the magnetic flux travels where you want it to go. If this was solid, then there would be eddy currents and it would be less efficient. I'm not sure how less efficient, but it would be. I worry that my, by me filing away the sides of that, I may have connected all pieces of the part together. So it might be less efficient now. So that might be one of the problems. I guess we can measure it. Yep, it's totally connected, so it's a dead short between the plates. I'm not sure how important that is, but yeah, that is something to keep in mind. Now, one other thing, the whole electrical side doesn't quite make sense. So we have this going through a switch, basically connecting this to ground. And I believe the two wires coming off of the core, the coil, are going to the same thing. So they're, I believe they're interchangeable because I cannot find any difference. The difference between that and that are the same, at least on the other, this one. This one's broke, so there's, it's not the same. But on this one, so I, I believe those are interchangeable wires. I could be wrong. But that begs the question, why is one connected to ground when the other one has points to connect to ground? That seems a bit pointless because one is already connected to ground, so maybe there is a difference. I tried those wires flipped back and forth, and those don't have any effect. But whenever I measure between this and the body, I get the five kilo ohms of resistance, meaning that there is no, there is no resistance between the coil. This itself, whenever you measure from this to any of the wires coming out of it, you get exactly five kilo ohms of resistance, which is about, it's a little bit high. Like, from what I understand, these magnetos should be around three or four kilo ohms, but it's still within limits. I think the maximum you can do is like six kilo ohms. So, because there is no extra resistance between these two, whenever I flip that switch, when it's all connected up, I see no dis difference in resistance. But that could be a thing where whenever you have a high voltage test tester, it works differently than whenever you have a low voltage tester because, you know, they can be different. So that's a bit confusing. It seems like this wire doesn't do anything. And then, I don't know, I'm just really confused. Let's take this off so we can see. So here's the capacitor. Here's the short wire coming out of the coil. Here's the long wire coming out of the coil. I wrapped that around there because it's too long. Now, I am worried because that is like one extra loop, so perhaps that is interfering with everything. I don't think one turn around the core would cause much problem though, but that could. I have that connected to here, where it was originally on the other one. I, I reviewed the footage and I don't see any problems. This goes to the chassis and has the switch on it. So that actually is hooked up how it was. Now this will be hooked up here, but I, I was just testing without it just to see if this was bad. And then this wire coming out goes to the spark plug. I'm just not sure about any of this. I've made sure that the, the spark gap is okay and I've sanded those down and they're nice and smooth and yeah, I don't know. I would love to hear what you guys think about this because I don't want to just use an old part. I want to use a new part because then we can keep these things running. Oh, it's going to be a headache when I get to the carburetor. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching. See ya!